Former North Dakota Senator Frank Wenstrom once said, I can remember when I was a little guy and Dad went up to Fesda, North Dakota and borrowed some money from one of the banks. He borrowed $100 and they charged him $20 for making the loan and they charged him 12% interest. So he went out of the bank with $68. Things like that brought on the Nonpartisan League. From the time North Dakota was granted statehood in 1889, its citizens struggled against out-of-state corporate interest. Some of the problems that prevented farmers from sufficiently supporting their families included climbing interest rates on farmer loans, farm suppliers increasing their prices, and grain dealers outside the state suppressing grain prices. The primary supporter of interest groups outside of North Dakota was Alexander McKenzie. In return for verbal support, these railroad companies and Minneapolis-based organizations financially supported campaigns that aligned themselves with McKenzie. Although North Dakota farmers did not agree with the workings of McKinsey, there was little they could do to stop him due to his wealth. Fed up with abusive treatment, farmers banded together to create the Nonpartisan League. Many people would be shocked to learn that the creator of the Nonpartisan League, Arthur Charles Townley, had a socialistic background. In fact, Townley embraced socialism and became one of the most successful organizers for the Socialistic Party of North Dakota. A.C. Townley learned from failed attempts at recruiting socialist support that people liked the idea of state-owned entities but were scared of the word socialism. Townley was well known throughout the state. Consequently, after being forced out from the Socialist Party, it was easy for him to gain supporters for his own creation, the Nonpartisan League. Partnered with Albert E. Brown Jr., the two men were primarily responsible for permitting the ideas of the Nonpartisan League in 1915. In its first six months, the League recruited 26,000 members. In a year, there were 40,000. The League ran both Democratic and Republican candidates on voting ballots to gain support quickly. Additionally, Townley was a passionate speaker and provoked crowds into a frenzy. The League combined the minds, talents, and ideas of progressives, reformers, and radicals, united under the common goal of taking back the state's economy from large monopolies outside the state. Like populism, and even more so like progressivism, the League was designed to protect the social and economic position of the independent farmers. The League's platform gained support quickly from farmers as it promoted state ownership of a mill, grain elevator, and bank. The campaign theme was successful, and in 1919, League candidates took four of the five judgeships on, in the Supreme Court, the governorship, and majorities in both the House and Senate. Although the Nonpartisan League did not maintain this strong grip for long, they were triumphant in establishing a state-owned flour mill, grain elevator, and bank. All three entities are credited for developing North Dakota's independent economy and are still in operation to date. The bank opened on July 28, 1919, with $2 million in capital. As mandated by the Bank of North Dakota and backed by state law, all funds of the state are deposited within the Bank of North Dakota. The bank has never been involved with the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Instead, North Dakota Century Code 6910 provides that all Bank of North Dakota deposits are guaranteed by the full faith and credit of the state of North Dakota. The Industrial Commission, comprised of the Governor, Attorney General, and Agriculture Commissioner, all elected officials, was charged with overseeing the operation and management of the Bank of North Dakota. The bank's mission was to encourage and promote agriculture, commerce, and industry for the betterment of the people of North Dakota. The bank understands that North Dakota citizens have entrusted it with their hard-earned money, and they expect the money to be invested wisely for the betterment of the state. The Bank of North Dakota is a banker's bank with the primary goal not of competing with or replacing other existing banks, but to lessen their financial risk of underwriting large loans. The bank's primary focus is on helping community banks make large loans by partially financing loans, thus lowering the risk factor. Opposition worked continuously to plant seeds of doubt in the minds of North Dakota farmers about the NPL and its programs. Townley was constantly being accused of continuing to support the Socialist Party. Additionally, League members were fighting with each other instead of uniting and defending their policies and actions. The bank was under the accusation of mismanagement, despite auditors investigating and finding no evidence to support this claim, the damage was done. The final blow was the League's inability to sell the bonds intended to fund the loans promised to farmers. 
$8 million worth of loan applications were supposed to be funded by the sale of $10 million in bank series bonds. While in-state sales of bonds were strong, the bank needed more support from outside sources. The Axe fell in 1921 with the recall election where the three officials supported by the NPL and on the Industrial Commission were kicked out of office. Despite opposition now being in control, the bank was able to continue operations, but wasn't as active and prominent in the services provided to farmers. Instead, the focus was on making a profit, buying municipal bonds, and acting as a depository for public funds. The bank became more profitable, and in 1945, it was decided to transfer the extra money into the general fund. This decision was extremely beneficial to North Dakota as the money was used to finance improvement projects including new roads and veteran loans in the state. In 1960, with the election of the first Democratic governor since 1944, William Guy, the direction of the bank greatly changed. He reinstated the original mission of the bank to encourage and promote agriculture, commerce, and industry. Not only has the bank developed many programs to assist the farmers and businessmen of North Dakota, but it also reaches out to its young people. In 1967, the bank initiated a student loan program called the Deal Loan to help students in the, in the state afford a college education. North Dakota paved the way for federal student loans that we are familiar with today. By also providing rural banks with letters of credit for public funds, the bank encourages city and county governments to entrust their money with local banks. The Bank of North Dakota truly encourages people to invest in and work with their community banks. To help the bank meet the mission goals, a seven-member advisory board was established by state statute in 1969. The Industrial Commission refers to the advisory board with questions relating to the management of services and policies that would be most beneficial to customers and partners of the bank. At the turn of the century, a mix of businessmen and farmers came together and formed the Vision 2000 Committee. The agricultural producers believed the Bank of North Dakota had become too conservative, placing too much emphasis on profitability, leaving North Dakota capital rich but investment poor. The Commission was concerned about making risky loans and spending too much money. The two committees compromised and created a program that supported entrepreneurs and farmers while being money smart. For example, the bank accepted the fact that the business development loan program that assists new and existing businesses in obtaining loans that would have a higher degree of risk than would normally be acceptable to a banking institution. The bank developed financing programs for beginning as well as established farmers and for livestock retention and improvement. Another program, PACE, helps to expand rural communities' economic base by assisting in job development programs. The bank is a huge asset in terms of providing emergency financing through a disaster relief loan program for families and businesses. It is remarkable that the bank was created in 1919 and remains the only successfully implemented state-owned bank in America. With only 168 employees and no additional branch offices, the bank has been able to expand programs and loans to meet the changing needs of the North Dakota people. Despite taking risks, the Bank of North Dakota has an extremely high return on assets of 1.46% compared to the national average of 0.61%. Not only are there four times as many banks as the national average, 72% being locally owned, but those community banks average 430% more than the national average in lending to small businesses. During the recent economic downturn, Representatives from many other states have taken notice and came to North Dakota to inquire about the bank. While the bank has been very beneficial to the state, it would be difficult for other states to replicate the socialistic idea of a state-owned bank because of the special circumstances that led to the creation of the Bank of North Dakota. The bank was successful because the people took the responsibility of standing up to and kicking out overbearing parasitic outside interests in companies. By taking matters into their own hands, they won back control of their pocketbook and state. Every North Dakotan should be proud to know the story of the one and only Bank of North Dakota and the people who made our state what it is today.